Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm gonna create a look using the 3502 Second Nature Palette by Morphe. I picked this palette up at Ulta last week and I've used it a few times and I'm really, really into it. Um, so if you wanna see how I created this look, then keep watching. So I've not yet gone into this first shade in the corner here called Universal. So we're gonna go ahead and try that one out today with a Morphe M433. So I would rather take a very small amount and blend it out and then build up on that color than to go in a little too heavy handed to start with. They're almost like a pressed pigment anymore. Like most eyeshadow formulas are like this. So if you go in too heavy, too fast, then it's hard to blend those colors out. And then it's just like dark and then kind of blend it around it. But I feel like you can always kind of see that spot where you started if you go in too heavy too quick. I did pick up this palette at Ulta, but this one is not an Ulta exclusive. Um, this one is sold on the Morphe website. So I'm gonna go ahead and really blow out that transition with the Morphe R40. The Jeffree Star Blood Sugar Palette is coming out this weekend, um, and I'm definitely getting that. I'm not getting anything else from that collection, because again, I'm just like an eyeshadow whore. Um, there's like so few other products that really get me excited. Like I don't get excited about new lipstick shades. I don't get excited about I don't get excited about much except for like new eyeshadows. Like I fucking love it. I am a sucker for eyeshadows. I think it's really cool that the theme of that collection is, you know, reds and pinks and like the packaging and everything. And then he timed it to come out on Valentine's Day or around Valentine's Day. Um, I thought that was actually really cool. Not that I care too much for Valentine's Day. I mean, it's fine. So now I'm gonna go into Brick on the same M433, darkening up the crease. And then just kind of like blending that out into that universal shade. With this eye, I'm not gonna have to do this for too much longer, but with this eye, I have to be like a little bit kind of strategic about my placement. Um, I actually, I had to get more Botox in this eyebrow yesterday. So in two weeks, this brow should be lifted up and I'll have more lid space to play with here. But for right now, I have to be kind of I have to do more of the crease color on this eye than I have to do on the other eye just so that it matches up when I have a relaxed face. So, um, yeah, so we went in with a little bit more Botox yesterday, really, you know, just in this area. And then I got another round of lip filler yesterday too, so. I think at this point I'm pretty much satisfied with uh, exactly where they're at, um, size-wise, you know what I mean? Like I'm, like, I'm a huge fan of this size. Since this is the week leading up to Valentine's Day, I thought I'd do a uh, like a red smoky eye. Because I guess that reds and pinks are pretty appropriate for Valentine's Day looks. I don't know if, you know, again, people are really wearing these kind of colors for Valentine's Day or just, you know, in general. But um, that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. And really, for most of the holidays, I'm only in it for the holiday horror movies, you know? <laughs> like, uh, My Bloody Valentine, I will be watching in this next week. VH1, I did see a commercial somewhere, and I need to actually tune in. I need to pay attention to when this is actually happening. It's probably on right now, and I didn't even know. I think it's called, like, the 14 Days of Love. Maybe it was, like, 7 Days of Love. I don't know. Either way, they're doing a marathon of, like flavor of love and i love new york and rock of love and all of those like you know celebrity dating reality shows the best one was flavor of love let's be honest that one was the best and i love new york was great too because new york was just she was great tv but there were so many of those shows um they were so popular for like a hot minute for a couple of years there actually because what flavor of love had three seasons um, there were two seasons of I Love New York, which I have those on DVD too, actually. I have Flavor of Love seasons one and two. I have the first season of I Love New York. I have Rock of Love on DVD. I fucking love those shows. And I will watch those over and over and over again. I'm a huge fan. I Love New York was great. I mean, you know, she had her mom on there with her. Her mom was like such a bitch to all the contestants. <laughs> I have this love-hate relationship with Rock of Love because I felt like CeCe DeVille should have had the reality dating show, not Bret Michaels. Because at the end of the day, it's like Brett Michaels is okay, and Brett Michaels is kind of hot when he was like younger, I guess. He's like a football guy, you know what I mean? Like, you know that he's like super into sitting down and watching the game, and <sighs> he doesn't really make for good TV. Where CC DeVille is just so loud and crazy and over the top, and I mean, just that voice. I would almost rather seen him with a reality dating show. I would have totally loved to have watched that show. 
I would have competed on that show. I would totally bang CC DeVille. I'm not like attracted to CC DeVille, but I'm definitely attracted to his personality. Like, you know, and sometimes that's really what it's about. So then from Rock of Love, then you had the contestant, well, there was Daisy who had Daisy of Love, which never made it to DVD. Why is Daisy of Love not on DVD? That's annoying. Before I finish this story, we're gonna dip into fire. So you had Daisy of Love, and then you also had like the super villain Megan, which watching, if any of you guys remember watching Rock of Love, then you'll remember that Megan was a girl that was on that show. That was such a fucking bitch that she didn't even make good TV. You know how there's those like super villains on TV, like New York, she was like a total fucking bitch. But she was still, there was something about her that like drew you in and she was almost likable. Like I fucking love New York. I thought she was great, but she was horrible to everybody. She was such a bitch. But again, there was just something about her that kept you coming back and you wanted to see more. Then you had like this super villain like Megan who, she was a total fucking bitch, but she didn't even make good TV. She was just a bitch. But she somehow ended up having her own show. If any of you remember this whole era of VH1, you'll definitely remember Megan Wants a Millionaire for was it two or three episodes that aired? And then it got pulled real quick because I'm probably gonna totally fuck this up. If I made any errors in this story, it's all on Google, you can research it for yourself. One of the contestants, and it's funny because I remember the contestant because his name is Ryan Jenkins, and I have a friend named Ryan Jenkins, so I just thought it was so funny. He had killed his wife and then escaped to Canada where he was from and then hung himself in a hotel room. He had made it, I wanna say, almost all the way, maybe he was in the top two or three of the show, which it came out later that he, you know, that he had, you know, he had made it pretty far in that TV show. And then he had also gone and recorded a season of I Love Money, which was another one of those shows. Um, and I feel like maybe he had won I Love Money. In any case, they had on, they only aired like the first two, maybe three episodes of Megan Wants a Millionaire, and then they never aired I Love Money because he had killed his wife and then killed himself. So it was like this big scandal. So they just like pulled the show, never released it. Where is that show? Like it has to exist somewhere. There's no way that they like burned the copies or completely destroyed them. Somebody has access to it. Why has it never been leaked? Why has it never been leaked? I wanna see it. And I know, you know, somebody was killed and somebody was mutilated. So, you know, we have to, I'm sure we, you know, have to be respectful of the family. Cause again, I had no interest in watching that show cause I didn't like her and I didn't think she made good TV. But then, you know, two episodes in it was like, okay, like, you know, again, it's the same formula. So you still got just as drawn in as you would with any of those other shows. But then when they pulled it, I'm like, come on. Like, you know, I thought they would just like sit on it for a few weeks and then put it out once, you know, all of that kind of blew over and they never did. And this has been, has it been like 10 years now? It's been a long time um, and they never finished airing it and they never ran I Love Money. So to start adding some depth, I'm going to go into this color Brave and I'm going to switch over to a Morphe R39 brush because this one has a little bit more of a tapered tip there. I feel like TV kind of made a big change after that anyway. Like I feel like a lot of people don't even really have cable anymore and everybody just kind of watches Hulu or Netflix streaming cable services or whatever, but um, I still have cable and I still definitely watch a lot of TV. And this palette has a black that I haven't used yet, so I'm gonna use that one today too. And there is some fallout with this palette, but it's not anything that's out of control. Now I'm gonna go into this black shade called Wiz on a Morphe E36. I don't wanna blend that out too far because I don't wanna muddy things up. If a black eyeshadow isn't a good quality, it can go on like really patchy over top of other eyeshadows. And this one is definitely not doing that. This one seems really pigmented. It seems to blend out really well. And then with what's left over on my brush, I'm just gonna kind of take that into the inner corner, top and bottom.
So I've not yet dipped into this shade here called Ruby. I'm gonna put that on the center of the lid as a base for the bright orange color that we're gonna do. So not only do I have some movies and TV shows planned for the Valentine holiday, but I also for the next few days have a work commute soundtrack planned out. One of my favorite albums of all time, Heartthrob Mob's Hit List. If Valentine's Day was a punk rock band, this would be the album. Like that's like the perfect way to describe their music. They are a punk rock Valentine. Um, I'll leave a few links to some of their songs down below that are a little bit more Valentine's themed um, and you can check them out. They actually have a song called Be My Valentine and, and Don't Break My Heart. Don't Break My Heart was so good. So I'm gonna go in with the color Sauce over top of the NYX glitter primer. Pack that glitter primer on the center of the lid. And then on this larger packing brush from that vegan set, I'm gonna go into Sauce, which is this awesome, awesome metallic orange color. Uh, so good, so good. I don't know how this reads on camera, but in real life, this color is so intense. I mean, this color alone is a reason to buy this palette. I'm gonna dip back into fire on this E17, just to really add some of that bright red back into this look. That color might have got a little bit lost in the shuffle, so. We're gonna continue that craziness into the center of the lower lid. To go along with these colors, you know we're using Night Moth on the waterline. So completely off topic, but since my hands have been this close to my nose for like over an hour now, have any of you guys ever used this Aveda Stress Fix Body Cream? It smells just like spaghetti. There's no other way to describe the smell of this lotion. It smells like straight up spaghetti. So for my inner corner highlighter, I'm gonna start with the NYX Glitter Primer, and then I'm gonna go over top of that primer with the yellow shade from this highlighter by Posh Pepper Beauty. This one is called Tropical Sunset, because obviously yellow is gonna go with reds and oranges really well, so I'm gonna get that glitter primer down first. I'm gonna go into that yellow color on a MAC 219. Pop that yellow right over top of that glitter primer. That is a really good yellow. I like it a lot. For my cheekbone highlight, I'm actually gonna layer that yellow on top of this Posh Pepper Beauty highlighter. I'm gonna apply that to the cheekbones with a Morphe Y14 brush. And then on my trusty Morphe M504, I'm gonna dip into that yellow. Now when I layer highlighters like this, I don't like to blend them out too much. I want this to be really deliberate. I want that yellow to sit right over top of that pink. And I want you to be able to see both of those colors. So if it looks like a racing stripe down the side of my face, I'm totally okay with that. I just really want you to be able to see that difference between the pink and the yellow. That's good. I like it. So for the most part, we're pretty much done here. I'm gonna go ahead and get some mascara and lashes on and then I'll be right back with the final look. So this is the final look and the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you guys for subscribing. I'm now over 500 subscribers. To celebrate, there will be a giveaway in an upcoming video. Um, I just have to get my shit together. I've got some cool things planned for that. And then let me know down below if for a Valentine's Day look, you wanna see something that's gonna be more kind of like edgy, editorial, a little bit more out of the box, or if you want something that's gonna be more like a date night, actual wearable kind of look, um, let me know down below. Um, but make sure you like this video and you tell all your friends about it so they know to watch, and I'll see you guys on the next one.